from the outside, Joseph Clark looked like a normal teenager, but what no one knew was that he was a sadistic killer that enjoyed torturing and breaking the bones of younger boys. On July 28, 1995, at 1.30 a.m., 12-year-old Thaddeus Thad Phillips woke up to the sensation of being carried in someone's arms. He'd fallen asleep in the living room and assumed it was his dad and fell back asleep. But the person that held him so carefully was 17-year-old Joseph Clark, a boy Thad had never met in his life. What Thad didn't know was that he would become the second victim to a teenage serial killer in the making. Thad woke up a second time when he felt himself being placed on the ground. Still half asleep and confused, he then assumed it was a family friend and asked if he was having car trouble. Joseph told him that he was and that the car was over the hill. It was dark outside and as the pair continued to walk, Joseph led Thad half a mile to Joseph's house. It was an old house with trash all over the yard. Thad was fully awake at that point and had the slow realization that Joseph wasn't a family friend. Joseph told Thad that they were going to have a party and then he named some kids from the school and they'd be there soon. Thad recognized some of the names and so he went into the dilapidated house. Joseph continued with the small talk and told Thad he had model cars in his room. He asked Thad if he wanted to see them. Thad said sure and the pair made their way upstairs into Joseph's junkie room. As Thad looked at the model cars, Joseph suddenly tossed the 90-pound Thad on the bed. Once Thad landed on his back, Joseph grabbed his leg and began twisting Thad's ankle until there was a snap. Afterwards, Joseph sat on him and looked down at his prisoner. At that moment, Thad made his escape and ran down the stairs. In an interview for the show I Survived, Thad said that he could feel the now broken bones slide against his foot bone. He said that he made it down to the kitchen before Joseph caught him. Joseph jerked him backwards and dragged him into the living room. The small preteen was easily manhandled by the larger Joseph. Joseph threw Thad onto the couch, forcing his right leg up above his head until his thigh bone broke. It was the first of many injuries that Thad would endure for 43 hours. Joseph Clark was born in 1977 to a lower middle class household in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Joseph described his childhood as good overall, even though his parents were functioning alcoholics. In a prison interview with the podcast, Criminal Perspective, Joseph claimed that he would go out to bars from the age of 10 to 12 years old and hustle adults at the pool hall. For the most part, Joseph's life was fairly uneventful. However, that changed when he was 15. At 15, Joseph suffered from a traumatic head injury. One Saturday afternoon, he and a friend were riding a dirt bike with Joseph on the handlebars. The friend crashed the bike and Joseph landed hard. He had bleeding on the brain, a broken collarbone, and road rash. We don't know if his head trauma was the cause of his sudden urge to hurt people, but we do know that when he was 16, he began to act on his twisted desire. So by the time he captured that, he was confident that he would get away a second time. After Joseph broke Thad's thigh bone, Joseph started acting like a normal person. Thad knew that Joseph could kill him at any time, so he decided to befriend Joseph by asking him questions. When Thad asked Joseph his name, much to Thad's surprise, Joseph answered and introduced himself as Joe and said that he lived with his brothers. When Thad asked him why did he break his leg, Joseph told him that he was fascinated by the sounds of broken bones. Then Thad asked, why didn't he break his own bones? And Joseph said he could never get the angles right. Finally, Thad asked if Joseph had done this before, and he answered yes. A chill ran through Thad's body, and for the next day and a half, he would plead with Joseph to let him go. Joseph agreed once and gave Thad a phone, only for Thad to discover it was disconnected. It was all a sick joke to Joseph. Eventually, Thad and Joseph just watched TV. After a few hours, Joseph said that he was ready to do more damage and carry Thad back upstairs. Joseph dragged Thad back into his room and tossed him back on the bed. This time, he took Thad's left foot and began to twist. 
Even after Thad's ankle snapped, Joseph continued to twist until the 12-year-old boy's foot was backwards. Thad tried to fight back, but he was no match for the larger team. Joseph covered Thad's face with a pillow to muffle the screams. Joseph also threatened that if Thad didn't stop screaming, that he would break Thad's neck. Joseph covered Thad's face with a pillow to muffle the screams. Frightened, Thad held back his tears. Joseph had already broken both of his ankles and a thigh bone, so he had every reason to believe Joseph was telling the truth. Strangely, Joseph would wrap ace bandages around Thad's legs, then cover them in thick, long socks. He meticulously lined up the seams of the socks just right before he put the leg braces on Thad and forced him to walk. Joseph seemed just as interested in mending bones as he was in breaking them. Attempting to fix his victim still didn't stop Joseph from afflicting more pain. Sometimes, he would leave the room and come back angry. One time, he was frustrated that his car didn't start, so he took his anger out on Thad and broke his leg again. Thad endured torture that even an adult would have a hard time going through. Despite the threats and torture, Joseph didn't break Thad's spirit to live. On Saturday, the second night of Thad's imprisonment, Joseph left the house, leaving him alone. As soon as Thad heard the car start and drive away, Thad crawled out of Joseph's room and slid headfirst down the stairs. He was in such excruciating pain that he would crawl for a moment, pass out, wake up, crawl again, and pass out again. He didn't even make it past the living room when Joseph returned home. Joseph saw Thad on the ground and he was angry. He dragged Thad back upstairs and back into his room. As punishment, Joseph retwisted Thad's ankles, then proceeded to jump on the 12-year-old's legs. After what seemed like forever, Joseph went through his strange ritual of putting on the ace bandages and the white socks as though it was an indication that he was done for the day. Sunday morning, Joseph still wasn't done with Thad. Every couple of hours, Joseph jumped on Thad's legs using his knee over and over again, leaving Thad with a broken left knee. Thad would later describe that his legs were mangled and his thigh was swollen to the size of a basketball. Before Joseph left for the night, he didn't want to risk Thad trying to escape again, so he locked Thad in the bedroom closet. Thad was undeterred, and when he was sure that Joseph was gone, he picked up a heavy guitar that was on the closet floor and smashed the lock open. Once again, he crawled out of Joseph's room flung himself down the stairs and fainted at the base of the stairs due to the intense pain. This time, he was able to reach the kitchen. He saw the wall phone and was able to reach the low-hanging cord, yank the phone off the hook, and called 911. The following recording is from that 911 call. Okay, the officers are there. Hold on. Stay on with me though, okay? Mm -hmm. Boy. Dad? Stay here. Wait, anybody else there with you? Nope, just me. Sorry, sorry. I'm here. Okay, great. Get the ambulance going. She's gone. When the police found him, his leg was twisted nearly all the way around and his feet pointed in the opposite direction. Thad woke up in the hospital and the doctors told him that he had been two hours from dying due to internal bleeding. The surgeon who treated Thad said that the force used to break Thad's legs were equivalent to having been in a car accident. The police searched the home and found something startling in Joseph's room. In a notebook, they found a list of names of 32 local boys. They were separated into three categories, get to now, can wait, and leg thing. While circumstantial, it was the proof that this was not the first or last time that Joseph planned on torturing boys. Joseph Clark was arrested later that night at a party. According to police, Joseph's first words when he was arrested was, oh, he's still alive? When Thad was able to speak to the police, he revealed that Joseph told him that he murdered two boys already and one of the boys' name was Chris Steiner. A year before Thad's kidnapping, Christian Steiner's mother found his bed empty in the early morning on the 4th of July. When the police arrived, they immediately thought it was a kidnapping. The screen to Chris's room was cut, a shoe print was outside of the window, muddy shoe prints were through the foyer, and the patio door was unlocked. On July 10, 1994, six days later, Chris's body was found in a Wisconsin lake. His body was already in an advanced state of decomposition, 
and it was obvious that he had been in the water for a while. The local coroner said that the manner of death was drowning and the case went cold. It wasn't until the startling revelation by Thaddeus Phillips that there was a real clue to what happened to Chris. On August 3, 1995, Chris's body was exhumed. The county coroner took x-rays of Chris's legs and found that there were four different breaks. They compared Chris's and Thad's x-rays and confirmed that there were several fractures that were nearly identical. So why weren't these extensive injuries noticed before? When Chris's body was originally found, it was already decomposing and bloated. His legs were in the normal position and any proof of bone fracture was hidden due to the condition of the body. On September 16, 1996, Joseph Clark went to trial for the brutal attack against Thad. He pleaded no contest by reason of mental defect. During the trial, Thad testified and described the brutal torture and how Joseph's personality would alternate from cruel to kind. Thad also testified that Joseph pleasured himself multiple times in front of him. A psychiatrist testified that Joseph was a sexual sadist. Joseph testified that he didn't recall the events of that night. He said that he blacked out and when he woke up, Thad was on his bed complaining about leg pains. Despite the alleged blackouts, he was adamant that he had no intentions of murdering Thad. Joseph was sentenced to 100 years for attempted first degree intentional homicide, mayhem, and causing mental harm to a child. On November 3rd, 1997, the second trial of Joseph Clark started. On the first day, 92 exhibits were entered into evidence. Half of it were x-rays comparing Chris's injuries to Thad's. Joseph testified that other than seeing Chris Steiner around school, he didn't know the 14-year-old and certainly didn't murder him. On the second day, Thad once again testified against Joseph and was instrumental to the case. During the trial, Joseph's mother testified that her son was home the night of Chris Steiner's abduction. Joseph will contradict this in the Criminal Perspective podcast and said that his mother had been out of the house that weekend because she was babysitting her sister's kids. On November 7th, Joseph Clark was found guilty of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. Do you think Joseph had a third victim? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification button to find out when we release another video. And remember to stay safe.